Hey, Mara, buddy. Hopefully you had a wonderful weekend. And for those of you that are veterans, uh, happy Veterans Day. So here we go. Five key breakdown in this 40-second snippet of the FIA presentation. We listened to an advisor going through the S&P 500 mountain chart. Is the client following? Because that's what we're going to find with a lot of, when we're talking about a lot of numbers or data or tables, this is a really good lesson for you to learn if you haven't looked at this on how you can go through all that information. Because do, um, do our clients look at these tables and charts and numbers every single day? No. So we have to walk through, which would, in a, a very methodical, short manner, how we uh, go through those charts. So, uh, and, I, and I know it might be painful for you, but you got to do it that way because um, these people are not used to going through the numbers. Are you going to lose them? If you lose them, when are you going to be able to pick them back up? You don't know. So, uh, euphoric investors trigger alarm bells over stock market rally. Now, guys, I look back for 18 months. For 18 months, I've been saying, hey, you know what? Look at all these uh, uh, alarm bells going off for the market. And has the market crashed yet? Nope, not yet. And how long were the uh, alarm bells going off in the late 90s? For those of you that were following it. Yeah, they were going off for like three years. And remember when we went back here about six months ago and we looked at how are you hurt by getting your clients out early? How are your clients hurt by getting out early? If you got out, if we went back to 2000 and you got out in 1997 instead of 2000, how would your clients been hurt? Not exactly. How about if they got out in 98 or 99 instead of 2000, how would your clients been hurt? They wouldn't have been. How would your clients been hurt if they got out in 2005, 2006, 2007, before 2008? They would not have been hurt. And what do we say to it to uh, money managers who tell us that they've got it figured out, that they're either going to get you out at the right time or that they're going to shave off the, <laughs> the harsh on the bottom sides? Yeah, exactly right. So here's yet one more trigger. Uh, that, that our alarm bell is going off, that all it needs is, like we said, all we need is a, a match to light the, light the fire. We don't know when, when that's going to be, but it, it will come sooner or later. Euphoric investors uh, uh, triggers alarm bells for over uh, stock market rally. Reports in the U.S. may drop some China tariffs to seal since a week ago, but the RBC, Capital Markets, head of U.S. equity strategy, is wary of those. Now, last week I showed you the chase. Uh, Chase, uh, the week before I showed you, or two weeks before I, I showed you, um, uh, I can't remember, but another oh, uh, 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 large uh, equity management head who also is saying the, uh, saying the same thing, but for different triggers. He's wary of those highs and offers five reasons why investors should be to, if they call the day. This is the call of the day. In, in a, boy, I cannot read. In a note to clients, she says, sticking to RBC's year-end S&P 500, of a target of 29.50, even at the index pushes above 3,000. So what is she saying? The market's going to continue to go up through the end of the year. It's going to reverse before the end of the year. Yeah, she says it's going to reverse. Euph Number one, euphoric U.S. equity positioning among asset managers is nearing July 2019, September 2018, January 2019 peaks that are in line with the highs. And those of you that are technical um, traders or understand the technicals. What are we looking at here, dudes? That's not a double top. That's a what? That's a triple. That's what? <laughs> Look at it. And then we go back to 2007. So, guys, this is a what? So, asset manager notion net long position for U.S. equities. This is a, this is a fake or very, very strong resistance line. Yeah, it's a very, very strong resistance line, triple top. Number three, earnings forecasts for 2020 are too high. Number four, stocks are already accounting for the benefits of a phase one trade deal, which Calvacina, uh, Dallas would undo the damage that's already been done to business, business confidence. So she's saying that even if the tariffs were taken off at this point or they found a, um, found, uh, um, a, a way to agree, the damage has already been done to business confidence. And as of November 4th, the S&P 500, has rallied more than 30% from the December 2018 low. That 
similar to rallies seen off of index flows of 2010, 11, and 16. And as our chart shows, each of those years had market pauses along the way. So guys, for 18 months, have, do I show you the exact same warning every month? Or is it every single or every single week I show you a different type of warning going off, a different different warning bell on a on the dashboard? It's a new one. So it's not just the same indicator. It's it's, it's there are indicators all over the place. But does the market act, act rationally? Does the market act rationally? So just because all of these indicators are 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 saying the market is way overvalued, the, it's way long in the tooth. No, it does not act rationally. But eventually what has to happen, even if the market not act, does not act rationally, eventually what has to happen? The fundamentals, yeah, back to mean, right, David? It has to revert to mean, Nick, exactly. It has to get back to mean. Next topic here we're going to talk about today is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end of a 21-point checklist. And the, the secrets <laughs> to the beginning and the end. So remember, at the beginning, this is our 21-point moral of the story. Guys, I hope you all have the moral of the story end goals printed and put in a either, either laminated or put into plastic sleeves. Because if a client says all of these things, what will they do? If the client says uh, all of these things at the end of each one of the scripts, what are they going to do? 100% of the time, what are they going to do? They're going to move. That's right. Because there's no way somebody's going to say all these 21 things and at the end say, oh, but I think I'm going to stay with um, <laughs> I think I'm going to stay with my current advisor. If they say all these things, they're going to leave. Okay. So with the introduction, the beginning, we want them to say this meeting is not about finding a solution. It's about finding out what I like and what I don't like about my current situation. And I've done all the heavy lifting. Any changes that need to be made will be small and easy. What are we trying to do there with the introduction, guys? Why do we want them to say that? Not hard to fix, yep, because people want something that's easy and simple. So not hard to fix, yep, so I agree with that. What else are we trying to do? Lower their resistance. That's right, no pressure, Tom. Lower defenses, Bob. So they're saying, oh, good, nothing. They're not going to ask Strong Army to sign anything today. I'm not going to have to make any change today. Today is about information. It relaxes them. It also prevents them from saying at the end, well, what do you recommend? Because do we want to recommend anything at the first meeting, guys? Not ever. Good. So let's look at this. So again, we just talked about the first point. This thing is not about finding solutions. It's about finding out what I like and don't like about my current situation. And I've done all the heavy lifting, any changes that need to be made, we small and easy. And at the end, we want them to say, or we want to go back to the 20, uh, um, 21 point checklist from 21 back towards one and get them to re-say their advisor's motive for each. They must be upset at the advisor, not the 21 problems. So guys, why do I need to go back through the 21? What do people remember? Do people remember all 21 things or just the last thing you covered? Yeah, the last thing. So I have to go back and have them remember, oh wait, there was a lot more than just the last thing. Should this take a half hour or should this take five or 10 minutes? Just five or 10 minutes. Yep, just five or 10 minutes. Now, um, what do I mean they must be set up at, upset at their advisor, not at the 21 problems? So as I'm going back, if I say, so where do, you know, what do we find out with, uh, about the risk reward? So I'm going backwards from the correlation and then the risk reward. I say, so what do we find out about the risk reward? Well, I'm taking too much risk and that, that's infuriating. Is that what I want to hear, guys? I'm taking way too much risk and that's infuriating. No, that's right. I need to hear motive, 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 motive. Do I want to hear, well, you know, I've got joint stress to survivorship and that's not right because it's going to put my kids, you know, it's gonna, I'm going to have to, uh, my kids are going to have to, uh, spend money unnecessarily on an attorney and it's going to take longer. Is that what I want to hear? Nope. It's always my advisor did this stuff on purpose. And if it's not their advisor, then who is it? If they're a do-it-yourselfer, who is? Who? That's right, the company. Not themselves. Not themselves. Is a, is a do-it-yourselfer ever going to throw themselves under the bus? No. So if it's a do-it-yourselfer, it's going to be Fidelity, it's going to be Vanguard, it's going to be their 401k manager, it's them. Because who <laughs> will that, if given the choice, will the do-it-yourselfer admit that they were an idiot? Or are they going to throw their company under the bus? 
They're going to throw their company under the bus. Does that make sense? So let's listen to this introduction and see how this advisor does. Well, I don't come in today. Well, you're going to tell us something. Of course, you're going to tell us something. Yeah, all right. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got to. I put our report together here, so I've got, I've got the checklist put together. And of course, got a lot of things you guys are doing really well. There's a few things we might be able to tweak a little bit uh, to squeeze out some more benefits. It just depends on what, what things you like and don't like. And before we go through that, I mean, is there any way I could know ahead of time what things you're going to like or not like, or is that what we're going to find out today? I don't see how you could find out whether we like or don't like unless you tell us what you're talking about. Yeah, well, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. So, so well, I guess my point is to, to, before we go. So did the did the um, client understand what he was saying there about like and don't like? Yeah, Keith, I agree. No, he didn't. Yeah, Nick and Lonnie, no, he didn't. So let's go back and listen to that again. Because remember, what we want them to say is about their current situation, where you are now, what the, listen to what the client says. Well, how am I supposed to know what I'm going to like and not like uh, about what you were going to tell me? So let me go back and listen. Find out today. I don't see how you could find out whether we like or don't like unless you tell us what you're talking about. Okay, well, you're exactly right. So, so this guy thinks um, he's in there to do what? The client thinks he's in there to do what? Hear recommendations from the advisor. Yeah, get answers. That's right. Get answers. Hear sales pitch. That's exactly right. So let's go back and listen to what went wrong here then, okay? So here we go. Come in today. Well, you're going to tell us something. Of course you're going to tell us something. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, I've got to. I put our report together here, so I've got, I've got the checklist put together. And of course, got a lot of things you guys are doing really well. There's a few things we might be able to tweak a little bit uh, to squeeze out some more benefits. It just depends on what, what things you like and don't. So what, what did he just say there? Find you some more what? Yeah, he's, that's right, Kirk. He's talking already talking about making changes. So what's that, that, what's that radioing or telegraphing to the, the client? Oh, he's going to show me, he's going to try to sell me something today. No, 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 we don't want to do that. So, so today is about looking at your current situation. Today is about looking at your current situation and finding out what you like about your current situation and finding out what you don't like about your current situation. <laughs> because there's no sense us uh, uh, running down things that you when you already like something. There's no sense us running those things down. So once I know what you don't like, though, then I can come up with suggestions. But obviously, I don't have any suggestions today because I don't know what you like about your current situation, and I don't know what you don't like about your current situation. So do we have any solutions today, Mr. and Mrs. Client? No. Why don't we have any solutions today, Mr. and Mrs. Client? Well, because you don't know what I like and don't like. Exactly. That's how you want to do it. Make sense? Does that make sense to you guys? Good. Like, and before we go through that, I mean, is there any way I could know? Before we go, why do I want that? What's the purpose of that there? Again, letting him know that what? There will be no sales today. So just relax. Relax, relax, relax. Because we want them going in relaxed. Ahead of time, what things you're going to like or not like? Or is that what we're going to find out today? I don't see how you could find out whether we like or don't like. See, do you see there? Now listen to it a second time. Do you see where the client could misunderstand that that the guy's going to actually do his selling? Yeah, he's defensive already. Do you understand? Do you hear where the, the client is already getting defensive because he's thinking this advisor is going to sell him on, on changes, on doing things differently? Does everybody see that? Or should I play it again? Okay, because everybody sees it. Good. So we're going to go forward here. Unless you tell us what you're talking about. Okay, well, you're exactly right. So, so well, I guess my point is, to, to, before we go through it, I don't know those things. We're going to find out today. So I don't have any solutions prepared for anything, all right, because I don't know if I need anything yet. Okay. So anyway, we'll, we'll have a look at that. So he said it, but he said it when? After the client called him on it. And why don't we like to do that? Because when we do it after a client says something, we sound what? Defensive. That's right. We don't, and we don't, that's right, Marsha. Defensive. We don't want to sound uh, defensive. I have a little agenda to keep me on track so I don't get too far off track. Uh, 
And this is, so when we looked, when we met last time, we looked at, uh, at your goals, protecting yourself and your family from long-term care costs, making sure your money lasts throughout your lifetime, uh, ensuring that your assets are protected from losses, pay less in taxes if possible, I guess we'd all like to do that, huh? and then to see the increases in your portfolio. So are those still stand or are those still? Yeah. Oh, sure, the these line. Okay. Right. Is there anything I missed in there? Or? No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. One. Why don't I like, is there anything missing there? Well, yes or no. Good job, guys. That's what I, not what I was thinking. That's a yes or no. It's a closed-ended question. Uh, that's that's good. The reason I don't like it is because do I have any clue what he's going to say there? Yeah, it opens up to all sorts of things that have nothing to do with the presentation. And in the end, guys, anything that they say, I know you're going to. Some of you old-school salespeople are going to hate this, but it's the truth. Anything he says, even if he says he's super concerned about something, does that matter? Now, old school would say, yeah, it does matter because that's his hot button. That's the thing he's really concerned about. Guys, what's the hot button we use? What is the hottest hot button that, that has ever been developed in working with seniors and their finances? That's right, Nick. Their advisor is screwing me. So any hot button they can come up with, how is that going to stand up? Hotness-wise, heat-wise, as compared to my advisors screwing me. Is anything they come up with? Well, not. That's right. It's not going to come. So don't open it up to all because that could – Look, how, first of all, if you don't know what the client's going to say, that means now you're going to have to wing it. And when you wing it, guess what can happen when you're winging it? Mistakes. And even – yeah, not, Ron, you're right. Even if there's no mistakes, it still so distracts from our objective. So don't ask questions you don't know the answer to. Because <laughs> that opens up to all sorts of things. And, and rarely, unless you've got a skill level of working with this for 10 years where you can wing it and go off the cuff, things aren't going to go well. I mean, I could, I could do it because I've been doing it for 20 years. I would hope that I could. But if you haven't been doing it for 10 or 20 years, you don't want to do that. And even so, do you think, even though I've been doing it for 20 years, would I do that? No, because it's just going to make the meeting what? Longer, and as Ron said in, in one of the comments here, it distracts from the objective. It distracts from the objective. So here we go. One of the things that you guys have done well, of course, uh, I mean, y'all have already done all the hard work and the heavy lifting, right? And you have your will and your trust and your power of attorneys in place. And those things right there it puts you ahead of a lot of people because you wouldn't believe how many people don't have just a will and power of attorney. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, so just by doing that, you're going to have a lot of folks. But when I say that you've done the hard work and the heavy lifting, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have uh, sufficient income and you have a good level of assets, too. Because how long does it take to create those things? Three or four years or decades? Oh, no, we saved when we were first married. We saved $25 a month, I'm sure. There you go. Yeah, well. <laughs> my, my turn off. <laughs> that's my point. Is it, it took you a long time. What could he have done there? Well, let's see. Well, he, actually, he's going to make a point, but what should he have done there? What she says, he's been, they've been saving since $25, $25 since then. They're empowered them, right, Dale? Empowered. That's right. Got them. Really empowered them. Because why do we want – remember, guys, we're looking for the thing as early in the meeting as possible to empower them. So I'm searching. I'm, I've got my ear to the, the ground listening. Where can I empower them? Where can I empower them? Where can I empower them? And she just gave me a layup to empower. The way that I want to empower them, the reason I want to empower them is do I know I'm going to make a mistake? Yes, I know I'm going to make a mistake. So I want to put some positive energy in the bank as early as possible, so I'm looking for any excuse to empower, and would that have been a perfect place to empower her, the fact that they've been saving and made an agreement they're going to save 25 bucks a week, even from the very get-go. Yeah, so that's why I would have jumped in there and done that. So instead, he's going to make a point. Is making a point the same as empowering them, guys? No, it's you telling, selling, preaching, and teaching. 
I'm going to get to where you're at, didn't it? I mean, 46 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't just wake up and have money and no debt. I mean, you, right. uh, you've done it on purpose. You've done what a lot of people haven't done. I mean, we haven't. Oh, he's, he's empowering a bit there. That's good. How's he going to do this? <laughs> but not nearly as much as I wanted him to. Yeah, that's true, but you also have a couple of houses that are paid for, too. Right. So you have a little bit of debt, but that debt's kind of... Well, we work thought it was better to use the money for ourselves than to put it in the house. Yeah. I mean, you can't use it. It's in the house. Right. <laughs> right. And it's, it's, uh, and the interest is pretty low. Well. Exactly. So is she pretty proud of herself, guys? Yes, she is. So that's our, if, if somebody's proud of themselves, I need to really get on their side and stroke them. Cause, uh, and uh, when somebody's proud of themselves and you tell them that they did a great job there, are they going to look at that as flattery or are they going to look at that as sincere and honest appreciation if they're already patting themselves on the back? Yeah, sincere. She might even. So anyway, you guys have done a great job to get to where you're at. I mean, in the, in the things that we're going to look at. So did he do it? But did he do a decent job? I mean, he missed a chance to do it better, but he didn't do anything wrong there, did he? So how did he do on things done well? I think he did pretty darn well on uh, uh, things done well. He missed an opportunity, but missing an opportunity, does, uh, uh, that's extra credit stuff. Missing an opportunity is extra credit stuff. So he, uh, he did well on this. He didn't do well on the like or don't like, but he did well on things done well. That I can tweak a little bit or things that are easily fixed, I mean, compared to what you've done already. Because if you were here with no money and a big pile of debt, I mean, you it really would be <laughs> That's true. That's true. So anyway, uh, and then here's some things uh, that we can look at today to, to we may be able to tweak some of these things a little bit to get more benefits for you or uh, more of an advantage. And it looks like a long list, but don't be overwhelmed because like I said, all these things are easily fixed, even if they're things that you want to fix. We just have to look at them to see. Fair enough. All right. So the first thing is the uh, survivor's guide. And the okay, so things done well. Uh, areas of concern. One of the mistakes guys will make with areas of concern is that they'll start to to list all of them, verbalize them, and once you start listing them, guess what happens? Conversations, and then you get off the script. So he, he wants to just mention the, the areas of concern, and like he said, all the areas of concern are going to require huge changes or simple and easy changes. Simple and easy, and he did that. So he did things done well, he did all, okay, fine, and he did areas of concern just fine. So that's, that's how you get into the meeting. You want to make sure they understand that this is about looking at their current situation and determining what they like about their current situation and what they don't like about their current situation because you're not, you're not the judge here. They are. So you just want to make sure they're clear what they have, and then they can tell you what they like and don't like about what they currently have. And that's because of that, did we come up with any solutions for today's meeting? No. So you're going to go ahead and tell them that, but then they have to tell you that back. They have to verbalize that back. They have to say, um, well, yeah, no, you, you're, you have no solutions today because today's about learning what we like about our current situation, learning what we don't like. Because obviously, if we like something, I don't want you coming up or trying to, to tell us to do something different. It's only the things I don't like where I want to, uh, some ideas on. So they need to say that. And then we're going to pat them on the pat back for things done well. And the reason we do that is so they can say that any change we need to make are going to be huge and tremendous changes or small and easy changes. Small and easy. And then we say, now these are, and then you just want to give them a prelude to the areas of concern so they realize the reason you have them look at that list is um, so they're not wondering when are we going to start talking about the money. They understand that there's some things that we're going to talk about before the money. So it's actually, it's resetting their expectations for the meeting. We don't go and, and uh, we show them the list. We don't read the list of the, there is a concern. We just show them the list. So they, it resets their expectations. Oh, we're going to talk about a lot of things today, not just about the money. So does that make sense to you? That's how you open the meeting. Okay. So now let's talk about how we close the meeting. 
So we're going to review from 21 down. Then we're going to ask him the three questions. That are, or, I'm sorry, review from the 21 down to one, and we're looking for what again? Advisor, 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 or company, company, company. Motive, motive, motive. Then what we're going to do is say, so does this give you a better picture of where you're currently at? Do you see any changes that need to be made? And instead of saying, where do I fit in? We're going to say, so do you want me hands-on with making these changes, or is this an academic exercise? Because if you ask, a, if you ask, a, a, if you ask, how do I fit in? What? How can they answer that? I don't know. They could answer it that way. A lot of ways. Yeah, I have no clue what they're going to say there. But by changing it instead, do you want me hands on, or is this an academic exercise? What is? What are most people going to say to this? Ah, it's an academic exercise. Yeah, they're going to say, I want you hands on. I want your hands on. I want your help with this. Does that make sense? So make sure you're not saying, where do I fit in? It has to be, do you want me hands on with this or, do you, or is this more of an academic exercise? You just wanted to know what was going on. And the law, we say hands on. Okay. So we're going to listen to this same advisor. So for the first, for opening the meeting, how did he do on a grade of A, B, C, D, F? How did he do? Yeah, I'd give him a B. Everybody's saying B. I'd give him a B. Yeah, absolutely. I'd give him a B. Yep. Now we're going to listen to how he does the close, okay? So here we go. Oh, and, and, and let me ask you a question. What's more important, the beginning or the end of a speech? Beginning or the end of a presentation? So if you're going to be good at something, be good at what? Be good at the end. So here we go. Were you withholding a lot of information to me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a couple more things, but I think you guys are, we're, we pretty much covered it all. Um, what I can do is. So, did he do all 21 things there from based on that conversation? No. He did not. So, guys. It's okay not to do all 21 things, but who has to tell you, who makes a decision about not covering all 21 things? They do. And he made the decision. And I'll, I'll grant him, because uh, believe me, a lot of times when I was doing a 21-point checklist and I was hitting it out of the park on every single one, you could start to see them get what? I rate and distress them, and they're almost like, now what? So when I saw them do that, I would say, so we've covered a lot of things here. We still have three or four, and, and, and what have we found out so far? Well, this, my guy's taking advantage of me. He's screwing me. Yeah, and we have a few more things to cover. I mean, we can skip them if you want, because I can see you're getting pretty angry and uh, you know, pretty disturbed, and I don't want to – I'm here to, to help, not to cause problems. So if you want, I can skip these other things because I can tell you're getting a little, uh, um, you know, unsettled. And what do they always say 100% of the time? What would they say when I stop the meeting and give them the choice? Say, I, and say, I recognize that you're not comfortable. I recognize you're finding things you didn't know that are making you angry. If you want, I can skip. But I do make them say, why are you angry or why are you fidgety or why are you um, unsettled right now? I do make them say, because my guy's screwing me. You take advantage of me. And then I give them the opportunity. I say, now, if you want, we can skip these other things and we can not cover them. And they always, always, always at that point say, no, no, uh, sh go ahead and show them. Now, when that's happened, though, guess how quickly I can cover the other things? Really quick. Because how, uh, how much do I evidence do I have to lay down for the motive at that point? Little or none. I can go to the point. Look at, look at this. This is what's happening. Why do you think it happened? Another reason the guy screwed me. So does that make sense? You go through it quicker. It's just that you, because you don't have to lay down the evidence because they've already told you, my guy is screwing me. So anything else you show them is going to be pretty darn simple. So if I do correlation and I say, so these things aren't correlated, why do you think this – am I going to go through the whole um, uh, remote control thing or whole, whole thing about um, – a smart house or anything like that? Am I going to just, or am I gonna, just going to say, so why do you think that, the, that he didn't tell you? Why do you think he has even 12 things that aren't correlated at all? That's all I have to say. I don't even have to do a, a, an allegory, a story, or a metaphor. 
I can just say, so why do you think he didn't co correlate? Uh, why do you think he has to end 12 things, even though they are all acting the same? And what's the immediate thing that comes out of their mouth at that point? He's screwing me. I could say, why is he wearing a blue suit jacket? He's screwing me. <laughs> why does he uh, scratch his head? He's screwing me. See, at this point, anything that he does is going to be viewed as what? This is just one more thing he's doing to what? Take advantage of me. Does that make sense? But don't skip. Don't skip. And, and at this point, does he know w what these people are angry at? If he's decided not to move, talk about the rest of the 21 things, does he have any clue what these people are angry at? No. So he, he's going in blind now. And guys, why would you want to do all the work with a meeting and then blow it at the end? So here we go. I'm going to go back just a minute or so. I mean, we covered a lot of information today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, there's a couple more things, but I think you guys are, we're, we pretty much covered it all. Um, what I can do is, let's let the dust settle. Y'all go see if there's any, put your heads together, see if you have any questions for me. If I can come up with something that'll do what you're wanting to do. Uh, What's he doing now, guys? Is that selling? That's right. Is that what we're supposed to do here? No, 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 no. Why don't we want to sell here? What was this meeting about? This, the advisor is completely lost track of what this meeting's about. What is this meeting about? Getting them to leave their current advisor. Because if we instead say, listen, I can show you how to do things better, what are we going to get with that, guys? What's our closing ratio when, it, when we say, I can do things better? What's our closing ratio? 10%. That's the beauty pageant mentality, right, Sue? 10% when, when we say, I can do it better. Because remember, do they want to leave their current advisor? No, they prefer not to because it, it entails hassle and it can entail, uh, and confrontation. They don't want hassle. They don't want confrontation. So if you revert to, let me show you what I can I can do all this stuff better, what are they going to do with that information? Take it back to their current guy. Take it back to their current guy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, we're going to play the rest of this and you find out what's happening here. We don't want to get together and look at it and then take that and see if it's, you know, if, if you could get the bond-like interest, that much growth potential or better, but with the safety and the liquidity that you want, is that? Yeah, I'm just, what happens, let's say that, uh, that I buy an annuity? See, look at what's happening now. He's into a conversation. So how, how good a, a, the guy's coming up with objections, and has the advisor even been able to make a good presentation yet? His presentation was, if I could do this, would you be interested? That, that's a great presentation. So now he's got an objection. He's got to deal with an objection before he, even, before he spent more than a minute on a presentation. You can't do that. You're going to get into all sorts of trouble. Okay. And it gives me the bond, but and it gives me the distribution that covers the mandatory or required distribution from the IRA. Whatever. The, I don't even know what that is right now. Yeah, it's weird. So is this guy mad at his advisor at all at this point? Nope. Well, three and a half, four percent to start with, somewhere around there. Okay. Oh, it goes up a little bit every year. All right. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Of so, okay. yours and of mine, a little different. All right. Yeah. And so, if I get that, then when I pass away, what happens to the money that is in that annuity? It goes to the beneficiary that's named on there. So, what are we into now, guys? Did he accomplish anything from this from this meeting? No. He might have just well have done what. What should, if you're going to do this, if this is how you're going to end the meeting, what should you do in your meeting? Just go in and do the FIA presentation. It's going to be a hell of a lot better than what – is the FIA presentation going to be a hell of a lot better than what's happening right now? 
So if you're going to skip the 21-point checklist, or if you're going to do the 21-point checklist and then sell at the end, just skip the 21-point checklist, go right in for the FIA presentation. See, here's what's happened. Did he end with a flourish, or did he end, <laughs> did he peter out? Run out, taper off, fizzle out, run down, dwindle, diminish. See, this is not the time to sell. Why is this not the time to sell? See, it's not the time to sell. Because this is the time for them to say, my guy is taking advantage. I cannot stay with my guy one second longer because he's taking advantage of me. See, the problem is, <laughs> if at the end you start to sell, I learned in the Navy when I was a young buck with a way too much testosterone at standing at a whopping 5'7", 150 pounds, that if I got into fights, and I always, I mean, I was doing stupid things back then, speaking of Veterans Day and being in the Navy and everything else, where I'd get into fights at bars. But here's what I learned. At 5'7", 150 pounds, what was going to happen to me in most fights? I was going to get my, my clock cleaned. So I learned, do I ever go into a fight with a jab, jab, jab? No. If I'm going to get into a fight, I'm looking for what? My one opportunity to lay a haymaker and bring that guy down. I need a knockout with my first punch. Because if I don't, what's going to happen? I'm going to get my, you know what, beat. See, I'm looking for a knockout. I'm looking for a knockout punch. So at the end of this meeting, am I going to have time to set it up to deliver a knockout punch? Or am I going to be going jab, 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 jab with little tiny nuggets of what I'm going to um, present? It's just going to be jab. It's going to be, hey, I could save you money. Hey, I could make you money. Hey, we could get, make returns with, with little. That's, that's what? That's jab, jab, jab. That's dropping nuggets. No, I want to set it up with the FI presentation. That is the knockout punch. Because do I cover rates of return and have them tell me that they're happy with the 40% rate of return? In an FIA presentation, do I do it? How many times do they tell me they're fine with a 40% rate of return in an FIA presentation? Once or a dozen times? Do we cover liquidity? Once or a dozen times. Do we cover fees? Once or a double times? See, that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm a, I have a full hour to lay out the knockout punch that the FIA, the Warren Buffett strategy, may not be the perfect, perfect thing out there, but it's not, not a little better. It's a lot better for all sorts of reasons than what they're currently doing. I need an hour to do that. If I start laying nuggets at the end of this meeting, what does it tell the client? If I, if I instead start dropping off little features and advantages and benefits at the end of the 21-point checklist, what does it tell them that I am? A consultant or a salesperson? And as a salesperson, you're going to have a 10% closing ratio, not a 90% closing ratio. Does that make sense? No selling. No commercials. Jeff, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, you, you don't want to do any commercials. Uh, I always say, you know, if uh, you watch a preview for a movie, a trailer for a movie, and the trailer's not good, what's the chance that you're going to go to the movie? Zero. And so we don't want to do trailers. There's a chance that we would do a, a bad trailer, and then we're not going to get them back. So just do the 21-point checklist and let them know, hey, we'll, uh, I, I don't have any solutions today like we talked about. Uh, this today was just to see what you liked and didn't like. But now that I know uh, what you like and what you don't like, let me put pencil to paper and see what we can come up with. And then uh, when we come back, we'll answer a few questions that you may have had between now and then, and we'll just move forward at your pace. And if you do commercials, Jeff, even if you don't mention annuity, if you do a commercial, do they, do they make assumptions about what you're talking about? Yeah, at the very least, they're going to – even best case scenario, they had no idea. They're not going to sit home for two weeks wondering. They're going to Google it, and they're going to make assumptions. They're going to figure something out.
They're going to come to so some they're going to say, uh, what, what can give me a better income? Oh, it's a REIT. Oh, he wants to sell me a REIT. They say they're bad. Or he wants to, he wants to give me a, uh, um, be in the market, but with no risk. Of, oh, he's selling me options or he's selling me uh, this or he's selling me that. They're going to make an assumption about what you're selling. They're going to go to Google. And guys, when they go to Google, what happened to your sale? It's done. So I'm not going to do a commercial because I don't care if I keep what I'm doing mum. If I start giving features, advantages, and benefits, they're going to make assumptions. They're going to Google it, and they're, I don't care if they think it's a REIT, an annuity, uh, uh, options, whatever they think is going to say it's bad. So don't do any commercials. And if they try to force it, well, what do you recommend? You say, recall, when we began the meeting, we said we're going to have solutions today or not have solutions today. Well, not have solutions today. Yeah, cause did, they, did, did I really know what you liked and didn't like about your current situation? No, you didn't. So if I didn't know what you <laughs> didn't like, did I spend time putting the solutions together for something? Because if I spent a lot of time putting solutions together and it ended up you liked what you currently had, that would have been a waste of my time. And it would be a waste of your time if I tried to convince you to do something when you already like something. So why didn't I prepare anything for today? Oh, because you didn't know what I liked today. So it's easy to go back and refer right back to the beginning of the meeting. Does that make sense? So now instead, let's listen to an advisor do it the right way, okay? So this is the end of the meeting. Right. So the more investments they make for you, the more profitable it is for them in years. So she's finishing, this is just finishing up with the correlation where the lady's saying, oh, so the more investment, so listen to the very end of the correlation. You can tell already that this advisor is hitting on all cylinders. Right. So the more investments they make for you, the more profitable it is for them, and yours is just mediocre standard of balance. Right. And and then you need them more, right? Because right. you got all these, you gave me, and I can't keep track of 15, all these different things, but I can keep track of one. Right. But I can't keep track of. So the advisor says, the company, MetLife, says, man, we can't, even though they're all correlated, we don't want to put you in one, because if we put you in one, you might not need us. So what happens if you don't need them? We bail. And if you bail, then what happens to their profitability? Well, down. Exactly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to kind of go, we've covered a lot. You guys have been very good. So I just want to do a quick recap on it. So we talked about diversification. Uh, the, the problem is, because they're very the same, what's negative about them being highly correlated? If the they, same outcome. The same outcome, right? So if the market crashes and they're highly correlated, if the market, if we hit a bottom. Uh, exactly, right? So, it, but it benefits the, how does it benefit the advisor to have you high? Because it makes them. Because they're, we're more diversified, so their loss is going to be less. Or, or do they, again, do they, it could, if they're all correlated, it's oh, going to be the same yeah. loss, right? But if they're all going to be the same, if, do you need your daughter to help you run 13 remotes? I would, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you need the advisor to help you run, run 13 funds versus if you, one fund you can do, right? Yeah. So the benefit is it makes it look like they're doing more. Yep, then they need oh, it, right? Yeah. Right? So then we talked about risk versus reward. And what will we find about risk versus reward on that chart? Here, are you taking more risk for the rewards you're getting, or are you taking more risk and getting less return? Exactly. You're taking Second, more, yeah. more risk. And, and is that, is that a, do you want, do you want to, is that where you want to be? Do you want to well, take more risk for that? That kind of surprised me what you showed me with that graph is, you know, I I didn't think that's at all where my investments were in risk versus reward. Return, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I, it's, I thought I was more up closer to that line, and that's not that's true. Risky. So that's not where, it, is where you're at where you want to be, or would you? No, that's not where I want to be. Because yeah. you, you want to take more you want to take you know, less I, I, I don't have a problem with the risk, but I want the return. Exactly. And would you would you agree, Laura? So, and then we talked about turnover costs. And the problem with turnover costs is, are you paying a little or a lot on turnover costs? You got about. Well, so looking at that risk versus rewards, I would say we're paying a lot. Yeah, and then we kind of go back on your turnover. We're in that chart, go. You're paying about 20. So is that about an a, a annual wage for somebody? Yeah. yeah. Probably your social security. So she's doing, going backwards. What is she missing here, though, guys? What is she missing? Yeah, the advisor. 
So they don't. He doesn't like the risk at all. He doesn't like the risk at all. Now she, she did get it when she did correlation. She did get him to say it was the advisor's problem. But now with uh, risk reward, she didn't get him to say that. Let's see if she gets him to say that with turnover. So you may not get him to say it on every single one, but if you start to go through it too fast and have them not say it's the advisor, and if all she says is we've got these problems, we've got these problems, what's that going to get you? If they admit they have all these problems, what that's, what's that going to get you? Not that the advisor is the problem, but they have a problem with correlation. They have a problem with risk reward. They have a problem with, uh, uh, that's right, it's going to get you squat. It's not about the problems. It's about the advisor and why he did it. So let's see if she, uh, so, you know, it's okay if you don't do it 100% of the time on every single one of these things, but you better do it 80% of the time. So let's see if she gets the next one. Security, right? Internal over costs. Yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> In my social security. And does that hurt your over profitability then by that? Definitely. Yeah, exactly, right? And then we talked, we also talked a little bit about the fees and the variable annuity. Again, she what? There's no sense going back through it if you're not having them say, did she get them on, did she get them to say advise on the turnover? Oh, she missed it. So that's two misses. And you're paying... You're paying in there for that insurance, right? And do we need more life insurance? No. 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 And is that cheap life insurance or expensive life insurance? Oh, they expensive. It is, really, because right now your benefit is? Zero. And you're paying? Like, 2400 a month? Yeah, actually probably about 2800 yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's pretty, that's pretty high, right? 226 yeah. Yep. It's 2800 Yep, and then we talked about investment. Again, did she do it? Did she tie it to the advisor? Nope. That's a risk with the bond. So if the interest rate or interest rate risk, because, you know, that's where you said, oh, you're more conservative. You got so much in bonds. But if interest rates go up, then. And the bonds go down. Yeah, so you have that. Investment is less. Yep, so you have risk there. Um, so when we kind of go through this, and, you know, I could see, you know, then we, we talk about beneficiaries, right? Where we said. So did she get it on bonds? So they understand that they have problems. But right now, are we certain that they're pegging, pegging all their problems on the fact that their guy was looking out for his own interest? No. We have no clue whether they're pegging that, that on the advisor. We say there's some mistakes on the beneficiaries. And what were some of the mistakes there? Is it's going to go to your kids? But not to our grandchildren. Right. Yeah. And that could have been fixed easy, but what did we decide that they cared more about when they were filling out that form? Or they care more about... Your kids, or do they care more about making sure that income? So, aha, did she get her to say it on beneficiaries? Yes. So, guys, if they said it on beneficiaries, how easy would it have been for her to get them to say it on those other things? Easy. So, why do we want them to say it 15? Why are we not okay with them saying If we can get them to say it 15 times, why do we want them to say 15 times instead of twice. It's a psychological fact that the more they say it, the more they believe it. Making sure the things are right so that they can make the money, right? They weren't. So, and then we talked about tiling. And we have and the problem with some of yours is, is you'd have to go through probate, which means that you take, would take your kids time and money to get it, we would rather not. So it was an easy form, so we would want to make sure that that title was taken care of, right? And all these things we can kind of fix when they come on. But my question is, you know, we would... Did she get it for titling? Nope. So she's got it twice so far. So she's she's getting it 80% of the time or 20% of the time? 20. We don't want to be at 20. We want to be at 80. Look at all these mistakes. There's a lot of mistakes that have been made, right? Let me ask you this. Would I be out to lunch to say, I mean, everybody makes mistakes, right? Now, if some of the mistakes benefited you and some of them benefited the advisor, I could say that they were honest mistakes, right? What, what do you think? This is not a bad thing that she's doing. She's recognized now that she missed those, right? That she only got 20%. So she's going to lump them all together that there was a lot of mistakes made. But now is she telling, selling, preaching, or teaching, or is she letting the client make their own decision on this? Yeah, so if you're going to do this, you can still have to do it the right way. You can circle back, and I've done that uh, lots when this happened, when I took the shortcut and said, oh, God, I took the shortcut. I better wind up and make sure they really get where we're coming from. But listen, she's telling, she's, she is making the point. 
And any point we make is believable or not believable. It's not believable. Why is it not believable? Because we make money if they believe us. And anything where we make money if they believe us, that's not believable. So here we go. Some of the mistakes benefited you, and some of them benefited the advisor. I could say that they were honest mistakes, right? Would you think I'd be out to lunch by saying that? <laughs> so how easy would that have been turned into an open-ended question? So obviously when there's mistakes, do they, do they benefit one person or the other person, or is it really a horse apiece? What's well, a horse apiece? So if we found 10 mistakes and they were true honest mistakes, how many times should it benefit me? If it benefited me five times, it should benefit who five times? Or the other person? The other person. So true mistakes means that um, they're always made in one person's favor, always made in the other person's favor, or it's random. Well, it's random. So now how much have, I lied, have they made them say that mistakes are going to be not all directed at one? If I do it that way, how many times did they say it? Three times they said it. Yep, three times. No, but when we look at these mistakes, how many of these mistakes are benefiting you? Or how? So that's a good open-ended question. <laughs> none. No, so if, there, if none of them benefit nobody but the crooks. Yeah. yeah. No, well, did she get what she needed, though? Let me replay it. Mistakes, right? Would, would you think I'd be out to lunch by saying that? Mm -hmm. No. No. But when we look at these mistakes, how many of these mistakes are benefiting you? Or how many? <laughs> none. <laughs> no. So if, there, if none mistakes of them have benefit nobody but the crooks. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. So who, what did she just call her advisor? Yeah. So this advisor, that's the power of the system. Even if you don't do it perfectly, what happens? It works. But do I ever want to make that gamble? No, so I'm always in the pursuit of perfection. But the nice thing is, even if you're not perfect, it still works. So if the mistakes don't benefit you and they're benefiting who? They're benefiting... The investment. The financial institution. Yeah. So do you think when all these mistakes benefit them versus any of them benefiting you, do you think they're really mistakes or do you think some of those things might have been done? They're deliberate. Intentional. They're deliberate, yeah. They're deliberate, uh, intentional, right? Intentional, right? That's yeah. a better word. Yeah, exactly. So did she get what she needs? Yep. So they moved on and guess what they did? They moved part of the money. So they moved all the money after vacation or before vacation. So that's the power of doing it right. Make sense? So the end is very, very important. Do not skimp on the end. Do not skip on the end, okay? So when you master these things, do you see how when you master these things, you're going to get every client that you want to move to you? So super, you guys have a great rest of the week, and we'll talk to you all next Monday. Thanks, everybody.